Hey, what is up guys, and welcome back once again. Today we're going to be checking out the Rust Devil's Garage inside of our Raider Town. And so with that being said, hopefully you guys end up enjoying the build. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get a closer look. For starters, we're going to go ahead and check out the exterior first, and also this entire area out here. And so basically, this is where the slaves kind of conjugate. And so you might be thinking, well, if that's the case, and if they're all back here, why the hell are the Rust Devils stuck in this area as well? And I will admit it was kind of poor planning on my part in terms of the city layout, but in the end, it did kind of make sense. Because the main purpose of this garage is to end up making robots for the slaves or potentially even raiders to fight inside of the arena. Also to sort of add to the fact that this raider gang is obviously in at least a bit of danger, I've gone ahead and put up this chain link fence along with a couple of their robots out here as guards. And to be honest the distance from this building to the arena really isn't that far of a walk. And you can't forget these raiders obviously have guns with them, and then the slaves would have the explosive collars. So all in all, you could say the placement of their garage really isn't that big of a deal after all. And by the way, this, if you're wondering, is a big podium, which they would use to auction off slaves. So that's kind of the main reason why there's all these spikes out here. Since really you're going to have a whole lot of people together in this one area. So maybe even slaves from time to time who are just watching their buddies get sold off along with raiders and just random people from the commonwealth who might want to buy them. And no, the Rust Devils don't own this podium nor the slaves. I just figured I'd show it off since I have updated it a little bit since the last time you guys might have seen it. But anyways, moving inside, as you can see, we have a few decorations on the way in there such as the wooden walkway and the little fire pit over here. Once again, you could say this might be a dangerous spot to sit at, but like I said earlier, these guys have guns, and if that wasn't enough, as you can see right behind the chairs is a great big crate full of the body parts that used to belong to previous slaves who might have tried to attack this place a while back. So at the very least, I figured that would be a pretty damn good warning sign for other slaves in the area to not end up making the same mistake. Oh yeah, and really quick, I know we're kind of jumping around a lot at this point, but I'm sure there's at least a few of you wondering what that giant building in the back is. Yes, it is part of the Rust Devils building, but no, we're not going to be checking it out today. I think it's going to end up being a big old warehouse, whereas... This smaller garage is more so for minor repairs rather than actually constructing the entire robot. But with that out of the way, let's go ahead and finally check out the inside. So as you can see, the security in here is decent, I would say. Nothing too crazy, but I don't think they really need anything that's too over the top. And even though the place isn't huge, especially compared to the area behind it. I'd say they still have a good amount of room to make the repairs they're actually doing in here. And speaking of those, this counter in the back is where the bulk of those are constructed. So you can see we have the little iBot head here being worked on, as well as some other cool details too. For instance, the great big Mechanist poster. I always thought it would be kind of cool if maybe the Rust Devils wanted to capture her, or him if it's the Mechanist from Fallout 3. So that's why it says Wanted on the left hand side, and if you don't know who the Mechanist is by now, he's pretty much the king at constructing robots to do his bidding. So obviously that would be the main reason to why the Rust Devils would want him on their side, even if he wasn't voluntarily working for him. There's also a couple other smaller details, like the various magazines, and these aren't just random ones either. I tried to find some that had at least something to do with robots, and to me, even the comic book with the bear on the front of it has at least something to do with the Rust Devils, 
since I always felt that especially their bigger robots were always kind of inspired by bigger monsters like death claws. And also speaking of things making sense, since whoever's working here at the moment is building an iBot head, I thought putting down a little model one as well would fit pretty nice and would also give the guy some inspiration at the very least. And really there's all kinds of this stuff just scattered throughout the entire build. I mean there's a few Mr. Handy fuel canisters sitting around here and there. Some more magazines that once again have to do with robots. Uh, some various parts kind of scattered everywhere such as the duct tape or the fusion core which I'm sure some robots need to actually power themselves up like the sentry bots for instance and like all of the themed builds we've done I've tried to include a set of armor that is really specific to the raider gang that works there or lives there and with that in mind I always kind of viewed the rust devils as being a raider gang that was really passionate about the work they were doing even if it was rather harmful so that's why I thought them actually living in their garage, hence the bunk bed and even the third mattress on the ground, fit really well with what their gang was all about. And also to make this place feel a little more homey, we have some other things kind of scattered around the build, like lunch trays, various beer bottles, some of their personal weapons or gadgets, if you want to call them that. Uh, I know it's kind of tough to see, but up here on the third shelf is a cap stash, since obviously they're not making those robots for the arena for free. I thought they at least deserved some cut of the winnings, so hopefully things like the cap stash kind of simplify that. And even though this isn't the main warehouse, we also have tons of storage in here, whether it be a simple tool rack like the one up there the various drawers beneath the counter, or even things like the boxes, which you can find all over the build. With all of that being said though guys, I think that should do it for today. So hopefully you guys did end up enjoying the build. I'm sure some of you out there who are really into the Rust Devils maybe wanted to see something a bit more along the lines of where they actually construct the entire robots. So hopefully we'll get around to finishing up that big warehouse. I'm not really sure if we're gonna get around to it in the next episode, but it is something I definitely wanna get done eventually. But yeah guys, feel free to let me know what you thought down in the comments. Thanks again for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next one.